To get the most out of this video, you should have an interest in writing your on-premises data to the AWS cloud. You should already have an AWS account and know how to sign up for AWS services. The AWS Storage Gateway is a service connecting an on-premises software appliance with cloud-based storage to provide seamless and secure integration between an organization's on-premises IT environment and AWS's storage infrastructure. The AWS Storage Gateway supports two types of storage volumes, which you mount to your on-premises servers as iSCSI devices. For this exercise, we'll work with gateway cached volumes. Data written to gateway cached volumes is stored in Amazon S3, with only a cache of recently accessed data stored locally. This minimizes the need to scale your on-premises storage infrastructure and is ideal for corporate file share and backup scenarios. For this exercise, we will walk through a simple example to backup data to Amazon S3. We will start by setting up and activating a gateway. We'll then create a gateway cache storage volume and mount this volume as an iSCSI device from a client running in your data center. Finally, we'll test our setup by writing sample data to this volume and taking a snapshot of this data in Amazon S3. This exercise assumes that you've already provisioned a host in your data center running VMware ESXi Hypervisor. Please consult our technical documentation for detailed host requirements. We will be using a Windows client to mount our gateway storage volume. We will also be using VMware's vSphere client to configure our storage gateway VM. The AWS Storage Gateway is developed as a virtual machine that you install on a host in your data center. You create storage volumes on your gateway which you mount to your on-premises application servers as iSCSI devices. As your applications access data from a gateway cached volume over iSCSI, this data is stored in an on-premises cache for low latency access. This storage is referred to as cache storage. Your gateway also stores incoming writes in a staging area, referred to as an upload buffer. This upload buffer space is used by your gateway to prepare and buffer data for upload to AWS. Your gateway then uploads this data over an encrypted SSL connection to the AWS Storage Gateway service running in the AWS cloud. The service then stores the data encrypted in Amazon S3. If your applications read data that is not available from cache storage, the gateway will automatically retrieve it from the AWS cloud. Gateway cached volume data is stored in Amazon S3. You can create EBS snapshots of this data, which you can then restore to your gateway cached volumes. You can also access the snapshot data from Amazon EC2. You will need to download the Gateway Virtual Machine by navigating to the AWS Storage Gateway Console. This VM comes in the form of an OVA file. You'll now deploy the OVA file to your on-premises host running the VMware ESXi hypervisor. Using your VMware vSphere client, connect to this host. From the File menu, click Deploy OVF Template. Provide the path to your downloaded AWS Storage Gateway.OVA package and click Next. Click Next again. The name shown appears in your vSphere client, but is not used anywhere by the AWS Storage Gateway. You can click Next again. Select Thick Provision Format and click Next. Thick provisioning provides your gateway with better performance. Now click Finish. It may take a few minutes for the deployment to complete. Synchronize the time on the Storage Gateway VM with the time on the host you've provisioned. In the vSphere client, right-click the name of your Gateway VM and click Edit Settings. In the Options tab of the Virtual Machine Properties dialog box, select VMware Tools from the Options list. Check the Synchronize Guest Time with Host option and click OK. You can choose among two types of volumes for your gateway. We will set up a gateway cached volume in this exercise. You will now need to allocate local disks to your deployed gateway VM as upload buffer. Upload buffer is used to temporarily buffer your writes prior to uploading your data to AWS. 
These disks can be allocated as virtual disks from either SAN or direct attached disks. We will allocate a 10 GB virtual disk to the VM as upload buffer from a direct attached disk. Using the vSphere client, right-click the name of your gateway VM and click Edit Settings. Click Add to add a device. Click Hard Disk to add a disk and click Next. Select Create a new virtual disk and click Next. Specify the size of the disk as 10 GB and click Next. Click Next again. Now click Finish. For your gateway to function properly, you must configure your VM to use para-virtualized controllers. This is a very important step. Within the Edit Settings screen of your vSphere console, select SCSI Controller 0 and click Change Type. Select the VMware para-virtual SCSI Controller type and click OK. At this point, we'll want to allocate disk to our VM for our gateway to use as storage. Cache storage provides low latency on-premises access to recently accessed data. For our exercise, we will allocate a 20 GB virtual disk to the VM for cache storage, following the same steps we took to allocate a disk for upload buffer. You are now ready to activate your gateway. The activation process associates your gateway with your AWS account. First, we will power on the Gateway VM using the vSphere console. Within the Summary tab of the VM, we will see the IP address of our VM. Note that after powering on the VM, it might take a few minutes for the IP address to appear. In the AWS Storage Gateway console, in the Setup and Activate Gateway wizard, navigate to the Activate Gateway step. Enter the IP address of your gateway and click Proceed to Activation Page. In order to proceed to the activation page successfully, your browser must be running on a machine with network connectivity to your local gateway host. On the activation page, provide the AWS region where you want your data stored. It is advisable to select the region closest to your gateway host. Specify a time zone and name for your gateway and click the Activate button. Congratulations, your gateway is now activated. Using the AWS Storage Gateway Console, click the Create Volume button. You will now configure upload buffer and cache storage on your gateway, selecting the disk that you allocated to your VM for this purpose earlier. Upload buffer is used to buffer your writes to Amazon S3, and cache storage is used for on-premises low latency access to recently used data. You can always add more upload buffer and cache storage as you need. You can also optionally set up alarms to notify you when you approach limits for your upload buffer. You will now specify the capacity of your gateway cache volume for your application data. We will make 150 gigabyte volume for this exercise. Enter an iSCSI target name for your volume. You will mount this volume from your application server using this name. Click Create Volume. We can now connect to our storage volume using our Windows client. Copy the IP address of your gateway storage volume. Start the iSCSI initiator on your Windows client, click Discover Portal, and paste in your volume's IP address. You will see the iSCSI target you created appear. Select this target and click Connect. You can now initialize and format the storage volume for Windows, so you can begin writing data to it. In the Start menu, type diskmgmt.msc to open the Disk Management Console. Your storage volume will appear as a mounted disk. Create a simple volume from this disk. You can now access this volume from Windows Explorer. Use Windows to format the volume using Quick Format. Let's test our setup by copying a sample file over to our mounted volume. This file is then stored in S3. Now let's take a snapshot of this data in Amazon S3 by going to the Storage Gateway console and selecting the Create Snapshot button. We can now track and manage the snapshot using the console. We've now successfully connected to our storage volume over iSCSI, written data, and created a backup snapshot of this data on Amazon S3. 
In the event that we want to revert to a snapshot, we can restore the snapshot by creating a new storage volume and specifying our backup snapshot. We can also access its contents from Amazon EC2. Now that you've seen how to do it, try it yourself by visiting console.awsamazon.com slash storage gateway. To read more about AWS Storage Gateway, visit aws.amazon.com slash storage gateway.